Ladies and gentlemen, DTAX fans, hearty welcome to our next live webinar here at DTAX in our DTAX Academy, together with our special guest, um, Stefan Weiss. So we will talk about today about the smooth surface, new, brand new process from Aziga. Um, Stefan will show you later the uh, composer software and some settings. And after that, I will show you the, the process, the finishing process, printing process. But at first, let us start with Stefan. So Stefan, thank you that you are here with us. Um, please introduce yourself and you can start with the composer software, please. Thanks, Marcus. Hey, everyone. I'm Stefan. Nice to be here. I'm the global technology ma uh, manager of Asiga, and I'm taking care of our material partnerships and research and development. And one of those developments I want to present you today. And in our strive to reduce laborious manual post-processing, like hand finishing of, of parts, grinding off, lacquering, these things, we have invented a new exciting technology that will help you to reduce this to a minimum. Usually, you would have to grind off supports and then buff the surface. In our case, we can use a combination of clever orientation to reduce the supports to almost none. And then, our new patent-pending high-gloss build-tray technology to create a very transparent, very smooth, ready-to-use print, um, splint ready to use out of the printer. And I'm going to start you by showing the um, orientation in Composer that will help you to gain the maximum out of this technology. And later on, we're going to show you printed and finished examples and a comparison that hopefully will convince you that we have something excited to show. So first, let's go into Composer. You're all familiar with this um, view. And I'm loading up a splint, the same STL, that we are going to show you printed in our new high gloss technology. And first, we can have a look at it. It's a, it's a pretty much a usual splint, nothing special here. We, uh, what the hell? So <clears throat> first we want to orient it to get the most out of it. And in a classical, Classical orientation, you would probably orient it like this, add supports down here, which you then would have to finish off. Now, what we are doing is we are turning it around and placing it right into the bottom. And you can use this small clipping slider to actually show you what is going to happen. So we're going to start printing right from the, from the build platform surface. The two um, legs of the arch are going to build up. And then here it's going to combine and print upwards. And you will see there's no island, nothing that re would require a support in this regard. You have to make sure, and this, this is something I want to point out, obviously if you orient it Differently, you might have to use a support. Some geometries might want to use a support. But so far, I've been able to find an orientation that usually does not require any support. Don't be scared by the purple color. This just means part of it are outside. And a clever design in your ExoCut or Three Shape software will help you to add something here that is then just cut off by the base plate. And you will have your finished splint standing ready on the on the platform and similar to other um, techniques, you can print several of those in one go. So and Stefan, one question from my side. So yes. that means there's not needed any supports. You don't need any supports. No. Uh, and also it is later not needed to cut the supports away to polish this area and so on. Exactly. So. You will not have to use a polishing equipment at all. Some might still want to use it. We can discuss this later, but um, there is no necessity in this case because you don't have supports and you will have a very transparent part right out of the, out of the printer. And it is important when you're doing this to check your orientation, 
with this slider as I'm as I'm saying it, so that you're actually sure you're not having an island here um, to create a support. And if you had to create a support, you would create it at this surface, which is a surface that if you had to buff it, would be one of the surfaces that is the least critical um, in terms of optical or quality of the splint. So we think this orientation is really, um, really nice. And in our tests, this works fantastically. I myself, I'm wearing a splint that was printed like this, and I'm very happy with it. Um, once you have set up this, this uh, orientation, you can then just print it regularly. The new technology does not require you to do any shenanigans with the composer settings. Um, as it is a new build tray, the, the printer will automatically detect that this build tray is active if you have it in your printer during slicing and will take care of adjustments by itself. Um, one more thing, as we still haven't found a magic solution to remove layering completely, we suggest to print the parts in 50 micron settings instead of the usual 100 you, you, wanna, you might um, be used to. This will increase the printing time slightly. You can still use fast print and separation detection to speed it up, but the finish will be very much worth it. So, sorry, one more question. So that means uh, you prefer to print uh, with 50 microns yes. um, layer thickness. It is. It takes a bit longer in the printer, of course, but after that you don't have the polishing and um, some other manual work. It's yeah. not needed to do. That's the benefit. The 50 will give you the nicest transparency yep. and also a very nice surface that is not necessary to polish in the end. Um, if you're really in a hurry, <clears throat> you can use our multi-range um, feature to print the, the first part of it in 100 micron to speed it up and then go to 50. But I think that's something for its own webinar if you want to go into advanced, <laughs> okay. advanced printing. But yeah. if you're worried about time, um, you can speed it up, and in the end, if you're saving your time in the post-process, I think this is very much worth it because you're saving five times post-processing time and manual labor, so a little bit more printing time can always be remedied by a second printer. So, Perfect. Okay, so that means you finish the print job, and after that you can send it to the printer, as all we know. Um, yes. From this part, um, normally it is now sent to the printer. Let us show you, let me show you um, the process after printing. So we started the printer before that I can show you now how it works to take off the uh, material, the splints from the platform. Take out the platform, lay it down. And as you know, um, I love to work with a spatula and a little hammer. That's what you can see in all the other um, uh, webinars like before. So take it on here. This is the classic process. That means um, here we have the supports on the splints. Let me lose it from the platform. I will make sure there's nothing else on the platform right now. And as you know, from the production we use the same material for the next print job. So that means we can take the platform directly inside, select the next print, start it, that the printer can produce the next print job. In this case, assemble the print job uh, Stefan prepared and send. Um, we have our materials here. We use a tweezer to take it inside of the um, box. The box uh, is filled with isopropanol alcohol. That's what you also know from the other webinars. We have the box A. This is for the first step. Um, three minutes in ultrasonic bath. Here inside is only water. Takes the material in the box. The box in the ultrasonic bath and start it for three minutes. After that, we blow it up with compressed air and uh, take it to the other box. This is a box number B. Um, it is absolutely clean isopropanol alcohol inside. Also three minutes is the washing step. Um, blow it dry with compressed air. And then you can use the auto flash sample with a clean box, please. <laughs> Take uh, the parts inside 
and after that we need two times 2,000 flashes. This is 100% the same process uh, like you know from the other webinars. If not, you can find it um, in the internet. It is more, I showed you a bit more in detail. For the new um, process right now, is um, this is absolutely 100% the same workflow. That means um, take it out from the uh, printer, wash it, cure it, and after curing, I will show you the differences between. So we prepared some splints. This is a regular splint. This is the same one you saw what I take off from the platform. After the finished process, you can see it is polished outside and it is, as you know, simply not possible to polish it inside. And here you can see the result with the new process. So that means it is only washed and cured. It's not polished. I hope you can see the differences between this is a regular, the standard step on the left side here. This one is the new step. And you can see the, it's an absolutely, totally different result. So um, the new print job, the new design looks like uh, it is polished um, directly after curing. Also, it looks like polished directly after printing for sure. <laughs> okay, guys, so this was a short um, introduction to show you how it works, um, the new print job, uh, the new process with the Aziga Max, with the new system to make sure the surface is smooth directly after printing. Now we have some uh, questions in our live chat. So let me have a look into the live chat. Oh, we have a lot of questions in the live chat. Uh, the first question from Emma, thank you very much, is um, she asked about the settings. Is there anything to set in the composer software? So, Stefan, that means um, do we need a special ini file or something like this in the composer software? Yeah, good question. And we have tried to make the process as intuitive and user-friendly as possible. And you don't need to do any um, adjustments in composer. The only thing is, like I said, you might want to reduce the um, the layer thickness and uh, make your orientation in a way that you reduce the supports. Because in the end, if you have supports, you might have to finish those support pins off, which then reduces the efficiency of the whole idea, or it's against the whole idea of a zero post process um, workflow. So in Composer, no, the build tray chip will do the work for you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So the next question is from Tim. Uh, is there anything needed to make uh, hardware changes, firmware changes directly on the printer? So the, the great news is no, you don't have to buy a new printer. You don't have to, know, to buy a costly upgrade. Um, you will exchange what you would exchange anyway, your consumable, which is the build tray. And this new high gloss technology is, is a new build tray that enables you to print the splints in this um, style, in this transparency and it will be um, the, the same cost and the same, same workflow as you had before. Maybe the only thing in the workflow that changes is you have to be a little bit more careful with the post-processing because you don't want to um, scratch or destroy the surface before post-curing when it's most vulnerable because it's still in a green state, it's still a bit soft. So just give it a little bit more care during, during washing and curing and you will be really happy because then you don't have to to put any post treatment um, afterwards in it. Yeah. Okay. So guys, we have a lot of more questions. Our back office and the support team will give you all the answers in the live chat now. Um, it's also possible um, send us an email if you have questions later. Um, also, we will send you the link um, to that you have the chance to to see the the video once more again. To cut the long story short, um, the big benefits is no supports. You don't have um, to make the finish uh, like before, so no polishing. The surface is smooth and uh, the, the finish process is much more faster than before. Stefan, is this right? Yeah, and I think um, it's incredible that you can print these tough materials in this clarity and also in this very nice color. Um, now with this process, which was very cumbersome for some people before. And I think this is exciting for us, and I hope it's exciting for you as well. Okay, 
Thank you for your time for watching us and also Stefan, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. We talked Thanks. about you talked just about is the next webinar. So for um, uh, what what is the name? Ah yeah. You can start with 100 micro and go to 50 Using, assemble. We we have so many cool features that many people don't actually know about, and it's called multi-range, which means you can use several different slide thicknesses in one print, speeding up this part of it with 100 micron and then going to 50 micron when you have um, the point where it matters for less, um, uh, less stepping. And this speeds up your print up to a certain point tremendously and then makes it really nice surface where it's necessary. So no compromises anymore. You can tailor it to your print as you need. Okay, thanks for your time and I'm sure see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Super. Ja. Schnell, effektiv. Vielen Dank. Das hat mich das richtig Spaß gemacht. Genau. Können wir gerne nochmal machen. Jetzt ja. brauchen wir den Termin fürs nächste. Machen wir. Danke. Super gut. Super.